Hi, we're up to chapter 10, section 10, radian measure. Looking at measuring angles and radians. It's the last section in chapter 10. Just going to jump right into it. Uh, first thing I want to say is, well, what is this radian measure? So, radian angle measure. is the length of an arc on the unit circle contained by an angle. Uh, so what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, if we were to take our unit circle here, let's say we have a 45 degree angle. So something like this here. And that looks uh, pretty close to 45 degree angle for me. Uh, so we could look at this angle one of two ways. One way would be to say, well, hey, look, this angle here is uh, 45 degrees. That would be the measure of the angle in degrees, uh, where if we're talking radians, would take the length of this arc, that part of the circumference of the unit circle, this here, that length, equals that 45 degree angle in radians. Maybe I should say that length equals 45 degrees in radians. Alright, so let's try to go through and get some common angles on our unit circle uh, in radians. Uh, well, first of all, we're going to start with degrees, or unit circle. We have that's 0 degrees, and up here we have 90 degrees. Over here we have 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. And really back at the beginning, I could say that's either 0 degrees or it's 360 degrees. Well, now if we want to go through and do those in radians, um, well, this is going to be 0 radians. And now we need to look at, well, what's the length of the arc? Well, if we wanted to get those, if you think back to the circumference of a unit circle, it's 2 times pi times r. Well, for any circle, it's 2 pi r. When we have a circle with a radius of 1, that r really just kind of disappears. We really have 2 times pi times 1. So we know then that this here, all the way around, our 0 degrees would be 0 radians. 360 degrees would be 2 pi radians. Uh, you really only need to remember one of the things in order to come up with a lot of the other angles. You could work backwards. Some people remember it that way, that 360 is 2 pi. Um, if instead we're going over here for the 180, this is the one I personally remember, that 180, well, it's half of 360, so if 360 is 2 pi, then 180 degrees is going to be pi radians. We do pi and then rad for radians. That's the one I remember because then I can kind of work backwards from there and say, well, 90 degrees then is going to be how many radians? Well, it's half of 180, so 90 degrees is also going to be pi over 2 radians. You'll start to notice that the radian angle measures pi is real common. That's one way to be able to tell. Are they talking about an angle in degrees or in radians? Well, if they have degrees, they should have the degree sign, although sometimes people get sloppy and don't put those in. But a good rule of thumb is generally if there's a pi in it, you get like a cosine of 3 pi over 2 or something like that, it's going to probably be in radians, unless they're saying 3 pi over 2 degrees with a little degree symbol, but that's rare. Speaking of 3 pi over 2, uh, if 180 is 1 pi, if you do 180 plus another 90, getting down here to 270, that's going to be 1 and a half pi, or often it's written as 3 pi over 2, or 1.5 pi. We could go over here and pick a couple more. So right there in the middle we have 45 degrees, and 45 degrees is going to be the same as, well it's half of 90, so half of pi over 2, so if you cut pi over 2 and half, you get pi over 4 radians. Um, the last one I think I'm going to do is going to be the 30 degrees, because you say, could say 30, and you could do 60, I suppose, as well. But if we're taking that 90 and we're dividing it into three clumps, uh, well, it'd be pi over 3, or I'm sorry, pi over 2, uh, one-third of that. So if we take that and divide by 3 or multiply by one-third, that would give us that our 30 degrees here is going to be the same as pi over 6 radians. 
but those are the more common radian ones. Those are the ones that you really should memorize or be able to come up with very quickly um, just to be able to do this. Uh, you will get some questions that say, well, 30 degrees is how many radians? You can just pull that out. But not all the angles are going to be nice like that. So I want to do one other section here. We'll say, you could call it Roman numeral 2, but I don't really have a Roman numeral 1. So maybe we'll just say converting uh, radians. Two degrees and degrees to radians. And in order to do that, you really just set up a proportion. And again, the the pi over two. Um, I'm sorry, the pi and the 180 degrees. Those are the ones that I use. So personally, I like going to these fractions. That you could say. I'm going to say maybe my angle in degrees. So I'm going to do my little angle symbol in a DEG over 180 degrees equals the angle in radians, so angle sub RAD over pi. And you could instead have pi to, or angle in degrees over 90 equals angle in radians over pi over 2. Angle in degrees over 360 equals angle in radians divided by. 2 pi, you just have to make sure that this angle in degrees is the same as that angle in radians. Um, I like this because pi is more simplified than pi over 2 or 2 pi or something like that. And for my example then we'll say convert, so example convert 1 degree 2 radians. Well, if we wanted to do that, we'd take this equation here, say, well, 1 degree, so 1 degree over 180 degrees equals my angle in radians, so I'll maybe say x over pi. And to get x by itself, you could cross multiply and divide, but by far what's going to be more simple is to multiply by pi. And if I do that to both sides, maybe I'll put it over here. So now it's the same as multiplying by pi over 1. That might help you see it a little bit. But we end up with x equals pi times 1 just gives me pi over 180. And best to leave it as a pi. Some people will go through and actually use their pi button, and then they end up with rounding in there. But pi over 180 is an exact answer for uh, 1 degree. All right, now let's do an example going the other direction. So I'll say example, convert... We'll say maybe a pi over 7 radians, 2 degrees. And when we do that, we set up our proportion just like before. So you could say your angle in degrees over 180 equals your angle in radians divided by a pi, that being the easier proportion as far as I'm concerned. Now our pi over 7 goes up here in the numerator, so pi over 7 all divided by pi equals x, what we're looking for, our angle in degrees over 180. And you could right away if you wanted to go and multiply both sides by 180, but I want to show you what happens over here first. Um, this goes back to something I try to push in my classes. If you can do this kind of thing, it's going to come in real handy with units and science classes and everything, but pi over 7 divided by pi. Well, if you take and look at that as though, well, that's this fraction. You could say pi over 1. And now you're back to what you're doing in elementary school, and you divide fractions. Hopefully, your teacher had you do that before you got your hands on a graphing calculator. But dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. Uh, so we can take and flip this bottom fraction, and then change it to multiplication. When we're multiplying fractions, it's the same as just extending the fraction line, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So that'll always happen back at your original problem, that your pi's are going to cancel out. Um, so if you have a pi in the numerator here, a pi in the denominator, those will cancel out. And really that just leaves us with a 1 divided by 7. So our problem simplifies down to x over 180. Once those pi's are gone, it's a whole lot easier to see what's going on. Um, equals 1 over 7, so we multiply it by 180. And we come up with x 
our angle in degrees is going to be 180 divided by 7. So if I were to punch that in my trusty calculator, I come up with 25.7 degrees. So 25.7 degrees. And you'll probably have to be able to do that both ways, from degrees to radians, and then from radians back to degrees. One final comment, then we're done is going to be punching these these things in your calculator that you've been doing things like sine of 60 degrees uh, for a couple weeks now, a week and a half um, and when we do that you have to be in degree mode because the angle is in degrees, uh, there's a little degree symbol there but now if you were to go through and have technically sine of maybe like a 40, I wouldn't write this yet, but if they don't put the degree symbol then is it radians? Uh, but you can assume that whenever you see something with a pi in it, so if you see a sign of pi over 4, um, it shouldn't have a degree symbol unless they're kind of being punks. You just don't measure uh, angles and degrees having a pi in there anyway. But when you see a pi over 4 and no degree symbol, then you need to take your calculator and change it to radian mode. And You'll see some like this in the homework. You'll probably see one like this on the test. So when you get one like those, or ones like those, I should say, um, when you have your sine of 60 degrees, well, you need to make sure that you're in degree mode, which you probably were in from the problem you did before. Then you just type in your sine of 60 equals sine of 60.866. Or you might remember that from earlier in the chapter as square root of 3 over 2. Uh, but now when you get the sine of pi over 4, um, you need to make sure, because that's in radians, that you go to your mode button, change that to radian mode, and now you can type in sine of pi divided by 4. And you'll get the correct answer of 0 0.707, um, which happens to also be sine of 45 degrees. If you're doing the math there, so that's square root of 2 over 2, also going back to section 3. Um, but make sure you know what mode your calculator's in. If you go through, you're doing triangles on the test or on the homework, and you're getting like negative lengths for sides and things like that, um, I guess people get flustered most years on the test. Check your calculator. You're probably in radian mode by accident. So for the most part, you're probably going to be in degree mode, but you'll get one question here or there that has you in radians. Um, that's all I have from section 10. We're done with trigonometry.